Hi, welcome to Ranger Country. I'm Peter. And I'm Lawrence. And we're here to bring you honest reviews of air guns and shooting equipment. We're here today to bring you the brand new redesigned BSA Scorpion TS. So TS uh, standing for tactical stock. Um, completely redesigned, brand new gun, um, available in 177, 22 and 25, similar to the, uh, the previous model. Um, I think suitable for all, all experience levels really. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a nice, accurate rifle. Obviously, yeah. we'll get to that in a little while when we get to shooting it. Target shooting and hunting. Yeah, you've got that nice tactile stock, so you could absolutely take it out in the field. A, a real good all-rounder. Yeah, absolutely. So, let's have a look at uh, let's get into how it. it performs. Let's look at the, uh, the different things this rifle brings to us, Lawrence. Now... BSA tell us that this is completely made in the West Midlands. Yeah, so obviously the the action being made in the UK, that's not, not the first that we've seen um, no. Of, no. of different manufacturers, but the stocks are made in apparently Walsall as well. That's uh, so, an yeah. exchange from Minelli in Italy, doesn't it? Yeah. Certainly does. And this one also has a, a piece de resistance is the... The BSA trigger fitted, which is even though it's sort of a, a a budget middle range rifle, it gives you a really good trigger. Yeah, nice absolutely. crisp break on it. Um, it, it we, we'll see. We'll talk about that when when we're shooting it in a bit. But uh, it it is a lot nicer. Zero creep. It's a it's a good trigger. Now, what else are they built into this one? So we've got the safety catch on the back here, as is standard with BSA. We've got this lovely bolt action, again, um, at the back there. Again, pretty standard from BSA. We know and love their bolt actions. They're nice and smooth, they're nice and crisp. Um, and you've also got their tried, tested for years, 10 round magazine system that's uh, situated inside the action here. They're, they've been bomb proof for years and years, haven't they? They're probably one of the only ones, probably BSA Air Arms, we get pretty much zero problems with, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nice and simple, um, and, they, and they work. They do. We've also got, moving forward here, we've got this lovely free-floating hammer-forged barrel. Um, everyone tells me that a free-floating barrel is, is, is what you want, but I, why, why is that? Now, a free-floating barrel basically means that it's... It's, it's attached at the breech, breech block and it has no other points of contact with the rest of the rifle or anything else for that matter. Um, and that is meant to help with the resonance of the barrel well, after it's fired. It cuts down on the vibration and which can change the point of impact of your, of your pellet or your bullet in the case of a rifle. Um, so historically they're known for being more accurate Absolutely, yeah. Um, underneath the barrel, uh, in here, we've also got their, again, tried and tested uh, fill probe. It's their pushing connector, same as all the gamos use, same as the BSA R10s use, um, that sort of thing. So it's sort of now... A little bit different to the R10. So similar to the old Ultra. Well, it's the same dimensions, isn't it? It's funny you say that. It is, it's yes. It's the same yes, dimensions. Yes, yeah. The one that you get with Gamo PCPs has like a shoulder on it. It does. Whereas yeah. the BSA one is is uh, smooth all the way down. Yeah. Um, and you can actually use the same for both. And we do actually, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Gauge on the end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, easy, easy to read. Nice and easy to, to, to read. Colour coded there. So it's nice and simple. It's a bit of a shame of it being on the end, some would say. A lot of people like it either on the side or underneath, mm. so you're not looking towards the business end of the rifle. Um, but it saves on cost, I suppose. It's simple to do, it's certainly effective, um, and it saves routine. There's probably here. two ways of looking at this. With it being on the end, you can probably 
not not that you probably should keep an eye on it as you're filling it. Um, probably easier to keep an eye as as, as you're as you're filling it up from your diving cylinder or your pump, rather than having the gauge down here. Yeah. And your connection up there. Just a thought. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I see you've got a uh, the old rotating dust cover on there. Yeah. Nice and simple. It's um, some some manufacturers use a use a clip that pulls off, but this is nice and For simple. A plug. Yeah. To lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. This one just rotates. To leave on the filling bench. Which you're all guilty of. <laughs> yeah, not the first time. Yeah. Now the rail, interestingly, the rail for the scope is, I mean, we normally talk about the convention of 9 to 11 millimetre, don't we? Yeah. But BSAs have always been a little bit larger, haven't they? Generally a 13... 11 to 13 mil dovetail rather than your standard 9 to 11, which your standard, and any sort of standardised 9 to 11 mil, mil mounts will, will fit. But well, what you'll tend to find is they'll they'll clamp them off to the side. Mm. So over distance, you'll find the the pellets going off your your centre, which is a bit of a shame, a bit annoying. But there are not thirteen uh, there are thirteen mil mounts available, um, and they'll clamp straight on. Mm. And they are they are marked for for BSAs in particular, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Now another one that does that is the Virarc HW forty five. That has a wide rail on it as well. It does just yeah. out of interest, which um, just is a point of discussion. Yeah, yeah. That's their little spring power pistol. There. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We I did forget to mention as we were over the barrel and over the cylinder. Um, we've got a silencer on this one. Um, they don't come with them as standard. We've got a Hogan decimeter on it today, um, but they are obviously threaded, half inch UNF standardized moderator as well. So you can get your silencers on there. Um, or your air stripper, or whatever you wanted. I'm seeing from here it does say hammer forged on the top of the barrel, which uh, I've been lucky enough to, to actually watch the machine making these barrels at the factory several years ago. Um, and it is an impressive machine, very, very old, but very impressive. And I think it does, as far as I remember, six at a time. It's nice to I see. Think. It's nice to see. Industries like that, production like that, still being in in the UK, still being in Birmingham. Yeah. So yeah, it's when it's a, when it's so good, it's it's they're, they're renowned, aren't they, for the yeah. for the barrels, for the quality. Yeah. Yeah. So at this end, we've got a, a quite a nice thick ventilated butt pad, um, quite grippy. Just finish the rifle off nicely at the at, at the butt end. Doesn't have to be spongy or anything. Obviously, it's PCP rifle. There's no recoil, but like you say, it looks nice um, and just finishes it off. Does extend it. the stock a little bit. I think without with with a thinner book pad, it'd probably be a little bit short for me. Let's have a look at the handling of this uh, new Scorpion. Just a shade under three and a half kilos without the scope and a moderator. What did you think shooting it earlier on, Lawrence? I thought it was brilliant. Um, obviously, like we said before, BSA know how to make an accurate rifle. Uh, the triggers, that nice two-stage adjustable. The barrel does the business, um, and the action is very, very smooth as well. Um, we've got 10-round magazine with it. Uh, very, very easy to use, as we said, tried and tested. The barrel length is about 18 and a half inches, which is, as we said, free-floating. It was brilliantly accurate, wasn't it? Oh, it's superb, yeah. I just hope that when we get to shoot it on the on the video, I can be just as accurate then. <laughs> it's uh, ironic. It's, uh, yeah. When it needs to be accurate, it, uh, I always let it down. When the pressure's on. Yeah, certainly. Now, BSA advertised this with a self-regulating valve. Self-regulating valve, is it they call it? Yes. Now... You get a lot of shots out of it. You do. I know that. Obviously, not normally you have a regulator. If you had a regulated rifle, you yeah. get more shots out of it. So, so there is no physical regulator in this rifle. What I think they refer to is the the design of the firing valve and make meaning it self regulating regarding how much air pressure there is behind it in the cylinder. So, uh, I I think they've been working on that and. They've sort of honed honed the skills so that 
the higher the pressure, you know, the, the, the harder that valve opens. So very clever little internals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of shot count, we get about 140 out of both 177 and 22, which for a, for a small sort of framed rifle, that's quite a lot. That's isn't it? not bad for a cylinder 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 rifle, is it? It's uh, I mean, there's a lot of cylinder rifles with a lot lot lower Absolutely. shot count than that. Yeah, for sure. A lot of other even bottle rifles with big heavy bottle up mm. front, even they would only just be getting up to those sort of numbers. Yeah. And they'll be full power shots as well, won't they? Yeah. Yeah. Comes with, as we mentioned earlier, BSA's 10 round magazine, both in 177 and 22. Don't know about 25. I'd have thought it is the same in 25, is it? Yeah, I don't know. I think it is. Uh, I think we've only ever supplied the odd R10 over the years. Obviously, these, these the are brand new. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, not a popular, not a popular calibre. Safety catch. It's on the left hand side, which is it's a little bit out of reach. I think you'd need to operate it if you're righty with your with your left hand. Um, and talking about being a righty, it is an ambidextrous stock, isn't it? Yeah, you've got a palm swell on both sides, so you're sort of you the the stock will, will coat into your into your palm nicely, whether you're a lefty or a righty. Um, and you've got a raised cheek piece. There as well. It's not adjustable, but it's a nice raised cheek piece, which is bang on the right height for us. Functional. Yeah. Very much so that the stock it's it's uh does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? Basically. Absolutely. Yeah. So nicely balanced. I think we found it a little bit front heavy. With no scope on, yes. We did. Now I put that down to lightweight synthetic stock at the front, a bit longer cylinder and barrel wasn't unwieldy by no. any stretch of the imagination but uh you know with with, with the um with the scope on it made it a little bit better um but once you get shooting it and you get your 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 front arm under the fore end and supporting it you you just don't notice it no absolutely not yeah no it felt felt uh, very very nice um felt very stable on the bench as well mm. um obviously nice bit of weight to it it's not heavy but it's a nice bit of weight to it just keeps it nice and stable. Yeah, I, I wouldn't get tired walking around the fields with this for, no. for a couple of hours, for sure. Yeah. Right. Let's have a shoot a bit. See how we can do. So without further ado, let's see uh, how I can perform. Not the rifle, because we know what the rifle can do. It's all down to me. Okay. Pardon? Pressure's on. Huh. Pressure's always on. Now, what excuses can I get out today before I, before my group? I wonder if there are any new ones, or if you'll just recycle them. All excuses are good, recycled or not. Now, this scope has got a... Um, for me, the crosshair is quite quite thick, and it covers quite a bit of the centre of the target. So get them out early. Yep, yeah, I'm trying. Oh, it is beautiful trigger there. I just don't think you zeroed it very well. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> that or I've got a bit of a crosswind right to left. Is it focus as it's indoor? Oh! You were saying about it being very accurate. Now, we talk about accuracy of guns and to me, the weak point in the equation is the human behind the trigger. In this case, moi, um, I find that the guns outperform us many times over. That is a good trigger. I 
that's not bad. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to try another one. Try a few more. That is going to be a very tight group there, isn't it? Yeah, couple couple out with the the one in the bullseye is is a bit of a flyer from the main group, I think. And as you say, probably didn't zero it as as well as I could have done. I'm enjoying shooting it, to be honest. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to carry on. Yeah, went through that same hole. It's a big hole there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nine pellets, I think. I've, I've got the the one marker there on the um, on the magazine. It was empty. Was that ten? I wasn't counting. I quite enjoyed that. Um, the thing is, with that one in the ball, obviously the group off to the left is you didn't set the scope up right. Um, but the one off the ball is directly directly to the right, and the one right at the top is directly upwards. So that's, if the rifle is in inaccurate, it would throw them all over the place. Whereas if it's directly one way, it's you doing something. Mm. And if it's directly the other way, it's you doing something else. You might be gripping the front of the stock too tightly, or you might have shot it on your breath in, or something. But that is... That's, that's your excuse, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. You made my excuses for me. I think, personally, I think it's a bit of a, a loose connection between the trigger and the chair, to be honest. But <laughs> I'm happy with that. Big fleshy ball. Bit. <laughs> yeah, no magnification scope. The crosshairs are quite thick. With my eyesight, I did struggle with it a little bit. That's no excuse, really. I mean, that's still a fingernail group. Oh yeah. Still, yeah, 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 yeah. The, no, the size of the target, perhaps the size of the image, makes it look worse than it is. But it that's does, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy with that. Nice shooting gun. That trigger, the, there is zero creep on that trigger, and that's one of the nicest things. As it's going, you you know exactly when it's going to go. Um, Which on this sort of price range is. Very it's a breath different. of fresh air, really. Yeah, yeah it, it is to, yeah. to have a real nice trigger. And that is the BSA trigger that they're fitted to it. So that's um, they're well done. Well done, BSA. Um, I enjoyed that. I could happily shoot this rifle. And I will do shoot it a bit more. <laughs> We've got to send this one back to BSA. This was a, a demo gun that they sent us for us to pull apart and I have really managed it. Give our honest reviews yeah. on our honest yeah, shooting. Yeah, so uh, that's a winner from me. Absolutely. If um, Yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like yeah. and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.